the cross at Calvary, he said the most remarkable thing. You remember that he said seven things, but of one thing he said to tell us that, which means it is finished. Now, it is finished as it pertains to God's redemptive plan of salvation and how a person can get saved. It is consummated. It is paid in full. In fact, that word to tell us die is literally a Greek word that was used by Olympic runners back during that day. And everyone that stood around at the foot of the cross understood that it means that the race has been run and the race has been won. And so in a sense, when Jesus said to tell us that it is finished as it pertains to the Lord's redemptive purpose in him coming to this world to suffer and die. But as to what the church is to be doing in relation to evangelism and missions in taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, we have, ladies and gentlemen, hear me good, we have an unfinished task Amen. ahead. And God's going to help me this morning and I'm going to tell you how we can be a part of finishing that task. You see the book of Acts is literally a record of the history of the New Testament church. It's a book where the ending has not yet been written. It's still being written. God is re still recording the acts of the Holy Spirit of the living God as Christ now lives his life in us, the New Testament church. And so the Holy Spirit, inspired by the physician uh, by the name of Luke, has penned these words. And it has, in fact, the same authorship as the Gospel of Luke, though the Gospel of Luke records what um, Jesus did in his human body while the book of Acts tells us what Jesus continues to do through his life and his body right now, the New Testament church. And so it's interesting to me that 30 years prior to the writing of the book of Acts, Luke records what Jesus did in his human body. But now he comes back and oh, it's about 60 AD and he writes about what Jesus Christ is doing through you and through me because we are now the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so it reminds me of the, uh, the, the praise that was offered in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 where the Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? In us. Someone says, well, you, yeah, but God doesn't need us to get the job done. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me on the authority of the word of the living God. I'm telling you, God has already predetermined that he will not do that work apart from us. He just won't. And so God's going to do it through his church. And that's what the book of Acts is literally all about. And so in this chapter, we see believers taking care of some unfinished business. And they're getting ready for Pentecost. And the only question that needed to be answered here was, did they have the faith necessary? You know, and faith is also walks hand in hand with obedience. But did they have the faith necessary to accomplish the task? Now what they did and said in, in the church in the first century reveals the kind of faith and faithfulness that they really had. Oh, if we had time to do some in-depth study, I'll tell you what we'd find out. We'd see through the book of Acts, truth believed, but we'd also see truth appropriated. You see, here's the problem with the church in modern day America. There's a lot of people that spend a lot of energy talking about what they believe and they put very little energy into appropriating what they believe or living it out to the glory of God. In other words, it's easy for you to say, I believe in Christ, but it's altogether something else for you to live your life as though you believe in Christ. And I'm telling you, this truth is to be received, it is to be appropriated, and it is to be applied for the glory of Jesus Christ. And so there's three things in particular that I only have time to deal with this morning. But first of all,